Hello value viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at Phalanx SeaWiz versus RAM and CRAM. First let's talk about how we got here. About a week ago we did this video, Phalanx SeaWiz versus Directed Energy Laser SeaWiz, which is the best close in defense. Very simply, we had two Arleigh Burks, one with a laser, one with a 20mm Gatling gun, see which works best as it turns out the laser works best but what was really interesting about it was reading you guys's comments and learning about how these systems work i gained two really interesting bits of information from your comments firstly the way we have the laser model just aiming at the target and zap 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 kind of immediately like that is not how the directed energy lasers work in real life in real life they track the target and they turn their laser beam on and it stays on for several seconds or however long it takes to burn out the incoming missile then when it's in a state to fire again it tracks another target keeps its laser on until it's burnt through that missile and so on so that's a different way to we had it modeled and we have no obvious way in sea power of modeling it like it is in real life the second thing you guys said is that although it outperformed SeaWiz in our tests it could never really replace the Phalanx SeaWiz and that's because it has weak spots all close in defense has weak spots all defense has weak spots for the laser it's going to be environmental interference if the environment around the ship is bad lots of water lots of mist whatever it really limits the ability for the laser to work and there's never really going to be a full solution for that so it's really going to be there to augment existing SeaWiz times. And that brings us on to today. Today we're going to move away from the laser and we're going to look at Phalanx SeaWiz, the Gatling gun, versus either its partner or its competition, depending how you look at it, which is of course the RIM-116 RAM and CRAM. So first let's talk a bit about RAM and CRAM. When the Phalanx SeaWiz that we know was designed in the 1960s, installed on ships in the 1970s and 1980s, immediately its weak spots were spotted in terms of defeating incoming low-level missiles. So to overcome those shortcomings, development began in the late 1970s of the RIM-116. The RIM-116 came directly from the period AIM-9 Sidewinder. It used its rocket booster, it used its body, it used its warhead and so on, but had a different type of tracking. It was still passive infrared, but to track its low-level targets, it had to work differently. The way it worked was it had two forward-facing interferometers on its nose. For them to work properly, something had to spin because those interferometers can only track in one plane. So they actually spam the missile around on purpose and that gave it its name, RAM rolling airframe missile that's how it tracked the rim 116 or the ram comes in two canister types for naval operations the original canister type as you can see here carried 21 missiles though it did not have its own independent sensors and therefore it relied on initial targeting handoff information from the ship's primary sensors which as good as it is again was another weak spot so CRAM was created and that's this guy over here that you can see that looks just like a phalanx SeaWiz. CRAM was directly devised from phalanx SeaWiz here which of course has its own independent radar and electro optical tracking systems independent of the mothership so if the mothership sensors are busy or compromised it still functions perfectly and that is CRAM except instead of the gun you have a canister of 11 RAM missiles just like the phalanx it turns and swivels and points at the targets and fires its missiles I should note also there are several variants of RAM A, B, C, I think we're at C at the moment, which have been improved over time to counter different threats. Also the way they track and hand off information from their mother sensor has worked a little bit differently. Today we'll be using what I believe is modelled as the C variant. So that's my understanding of RAM and C RAM and what we're actually doing today is going to be really simple just like the laser test we've got here a fairly modern variant of the Phalanx SeaWiz on an Ali Burke here we've got a C RAM we're going to take it one ship at a time and we're going to launch missiles at them and see how well they do. Let's start with the old Phalanx. 
we have one aft mounted here on a gnarly burke. 15 miles away we have some subsonic missile firers. Let's send one harpoon at it. We've actually done this part of the test on the previous video, but we may as well repeat it just in case we get some different results. Rounds away. Let's try uh, two. We'll make them time on target. So worst case scenario. So let's go pause. Let's go whoop. Let's go yeah. And let's go whoop and fire. One down and two down. Let's try another three. So uh, create some angles. So pause there. You sir uh, there and you sir there. Fire. Speed up. Third has been decoyed. Oh, that doesn't really count. Uh, oh, best try that again. Ah, one decoyed again. Oh, complete failure this time. Well, interesting. Well, Bit of a strange way of doing it, but it came up with the same result we had last time, which was that it could handle one, fine. It could handle two time on target subsonic missiles, fine. When three came, just I've never seen it get three basically, and the same happened here. It got confused when I got above two and, and one got through, so I think we'll leave that there. I think we'll just try a supersonic missile, a single one, quickly. So let's fire a P700 at us. Whoosh. And we can speed that up. And see what we get. I can't actually remember last time what happened when we tested this, so let's see. See where's out. No oh good. Boom. Yeah, I think that's what happened last time. <laughs> Look at it spin around. Too late, sir. Alright, so Phalanx Seawiz takes up to two time on target um, subsonic missiles and, well, generally speaking, no supersonic missiles. Let's jump to Sea Ram. So let's start with a single subsonic missile. Off we go. Now, I have to confess, viewers, that getting this to work was very difficult. When I do these small test videos, they probably look very easy to make, but the reality is they're very difficult. We have to abuse pretty much all of the sims that we use to get these modern weapons working. Sea power, for instance, tops out at 1990. This is a, well, you know, it's a 2020s weapon. Sea ram. So we've had to mess around with things to get it right, and I've not managed to get it perfect. In fact, I've been sitting here for four and a half hours now and it's still not perfect i've tried different games i've tried dcs as well but it doesn't work at all in dcs so this is the best we're going to get but let's work with it and uh, see what deductions we can get from it thus far so max range is about five miles um it's fired outside of five miles and that's because it's using the speed of the incoming object to extend its range pause sorry lots is going to happen in terms of how i've set them up i've used the wikipedia's 95 percent hit probability from their testings against harpoon missiles and we use harpoon poo missiles now so i've plugged in basically 95 percent hit probability now it's a bit more complex than that because it depends on altitudes and speeds and jamming and stuff like that but that's its base hit probability as claimed by the wiki document now i was talking about it being difficult to get stuff to work as you can see it's put two missiles out on one target i've tried to stop it doing that but i just can't do it it's a hard coded thing in sea power in my opinion it probably is unrealistic to salvo two missiles out like that if for no other reason than this one here aft of the 
front one, this is a heat-seeking missile, obviously, and trying to track the harpoon with this guy's rocket motor in the way, obviously it's going to create a huge blind spot in terms of IR detection. So I don't think you'd ever fire two C ramps close together like that. Please correct me if you think I'm wrong. Now I'm not saying it's abnormal to fire multiple interceptors at a target. It is absolutely normal, but this type of missile, for the reason I've said, I doubt it. Anyway, let's go. You watched, I'll probably miss now. The good thing is if, if they do miss, then it's not the end of the world because um, they're, they're relatively fast missiles Mark II capable. They did miss. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. There's your 5% probability pretty much. Another pair out. And they got it. So, yeah, you can see that although it's unlikely that they would miss a target like a harpoon, it is still possible. Although, if they do miss, then we get another shot. Um, I'm going to reset and let's try firing two. So, let's go one from there. And let's go one from there. One question I have for you guys about the handoff of the missile is obviously in this case the CRAM is detecting the incoming missiles with its electro optical and or radar at which point is it handing off that targeted information to the rams is it prior launch or is it post launch I would suspect it's post launch but please let me know your thoughts on that here goes double firing each target again annoyingly One miss, one hit. Refiring. And hit. What is it that's making it miss? Well, I don't really know the answer to that. But thus far, two. Let's try three. Fire. Speed up. And a response. All the missiles. Hit. 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 All right. Three. Uh, let's reset and do four. And go. Four. I suggest we might start seeing a bit of breakdown here, but we'll just have to see. Speed up. Fire. No hit, hit, and hit. All right, okay. Uh, it's surprisingly, it's getting easier the more missiles we have, but that's probably just chance probability, to be honest. Let's try five. Boom, speed up, and fire. Miss. Uh, yep, we've got breakdown now. Two have got through, three have got through. One's jammed. Refire and a miss, and that's it, we're out of ammo. So a breakdown, in this case, it's going to change slightly every time we run it because of probability and stuff, but in this case, we fired five, and it missed its first one, or the first pair missed, and that was it. It broke down after that. So what can we say from that experiment? Well, I guess we have to bear in mind that we're firing two missiles at every target, which basically means we're wasting half of our ammo. And again, I've not found a way of getting around that. So we can pretty much double, I would assert, the amount it can actually handle in real life. So if we started to struggle at five, then probably in real life, if you were just single firing missiles, you're going to get a good solid reliability up to about 10 incoming time on target threats. Which, to be honest, you can probably figure out just based on the idea that if it does intercept 95% of harpoons, so it has a 19 in 20 chance of hitting, and it carries 11 shots, then about 10 out of 11 it's going to hit the majority of time. So pretty much as we found there, 10 targets is about that breakdown point, which is, as we've seen, about three times as much as the Phalanx Seawiz can handle. So that's probably the best we're going to get from that, but for the lols, why don't we see if the ship actually gets hit, which I'm sure it will, because it doesn't have a phalanx that has field of view, and then we'll try supersonic. 
Right, let's try supersonic. I've no idea at all if she's going to be able to handle uh, supersonic missiles, but let's find out. Whoosh. I mean, if nothing else, it's a cheap way of shooting down missiles, right? I mean, a ram is going to be many times cheaper than SM2, SM6, whatever else you're going to use. Uh, even ESSM, I suppose. Uh, 20 miles, 10 miles. Uh, slow down. Go and check the ship. She's going to fire. Much less reaction time this time. Ugh. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, why not? Well, you know, what does it matter if they're travelling at Mark 0 0.8 or Mark 1.4? Uh, let's try it, just for the lols. A salvo of two. Speed that up. And slow it right down. Here she goes. My understanding is that the Block C variant, or the Type C variant of this missile, is designed to take on manoeuvring missiles, and these P-700s will be manoeuvring missiles, so... Why not? I was going to get two in one. Hey, <laughs> got two in one, they were flying right next to each other. Ah, okay. Again, why not? Uh, let me reset, let's try some more. Four, fire! All of the missiles coming out. Yeah, no problem. Boom! Oh, one's got through. Is there time to refire? Yes, there is. <gasps> Fair play! Right? I mean, there's point in us firing anymore because that's it. They've used all the ammo stock up. So if, you fire, if I fire another one at them, then I know it's going to get through. But... I think I've done that to death. Um, as we found again, Phalanx can handle two Tarman target subsonic missiles max, uh, not even one supersonic missile reliably. You go to uh, CRAM, much more advanced way of doing it, you can take down, well, you know, we have to account for the problems that we've had, but you can take down around about 10 subsonic missiles, and to be honest, around about 10 low supersonic missiles, you know, just over Mark 1. So that's kind of impressive, really. Um, I invite your comments, viewers, and bye-bye.